Hello everyone and welcome to another video which is in our great engine game series and our crazy Leela series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and this time we're taking a look at a Rook odds game and uh, yeah it's just one of those typical games where um, uh, you know the human opponent does pretty well. I think he's playing at quite a long time control <clears throat> and um, uh, gets a hell of a long way but uh, but somehow just in the end, Leela just finds, unearths some uh, amazing uh, hidden tactics and, uh, yeah, provokes them and the opponent falls into them. Happens a lot in uh, Leela's games. There are those very quick wins where Leela just wins, uh, like, uh, as if by magic, uh, lightning within uh, 15 moves or something like that. There are also plenty of these games where late in the game, Leela finds some incredible tactics. And, uh, well, let's have a look how all this came about. But you see how well the, the opponent actually did there. So knight f3, d5, c4, d takes c4. And Leela plays e3, attacking the uh, the pawn on c4. Looks a little bit like uh, what we saw today. Uh, this won't uh, age well, but uh, in the game between uh, Ding and um, and uh, Gukesh. Um, at any rate, um, Ding played knight f3 and e3. So um, b5, why not play b5? Because after all, after a4, white doesn't have a rook on a1 to put any pressure there. But Leela's idea is just to go b3. So even with rook odds here, Leela's just giving up a pawn just to create some open lines. And it's pretty good, really. I mean, we've got a, a weak pawn on b5 to attack. The bishop can already come to b2, and we've got the queen attacking f7. I mean, that's just general uh, general good stuff, basically. So a6, a4, and here black decided to play c6 um, and make Mr. B's happy with a semi-Slav structure. Um, yeah. Not bad, not not bad at all. Um, what I guess what Leela is happy with is that um, you know the bishop, if it comes to b7, it's going to be blocked in by a c pawn, so it's going to be less active somehow. And now Leela plays the move uh, d4. So yeah, I mean, has this been uh, brilliant, incredibly useful, giving up the pawn? Who knows somehow, but it's caused confusion, and that's what Leela likes. So knight f6, and then bishop d3, ready to play uh, the move e4. Bishop g4 from black. I probably would have, um, yeah, gone for something like g6 myself. Um, must be said that uh, both, but uh, Torch in particular, <coughs> really, really goes for it. And I imagine that uh, maybe Leela would have done something similar, you know, giving up this um, this h pawn in order to create some more um, confusion somehow. But uh, in general, you know, g6, a sort of schlechter Slav type of um, uh, structure, you generally feel would be kind of the most solid. But uh, well, solid doesn't always uh, doesn't always look as solid as it should with uh, with Leela playing in this style. So knight bd2, e6, and knight e5. Um, bishop h5. So black's put the um, the bishop outside the pawn chain, which is not bad. The bishop can come around here, exchange itself for this one, which is not bad either. Slight problem is the maybe the weakening of um, these light squares. So yeah, if knight bd7, then knight c6 can happen. But yeah, you know, obviously with the um, with the rook odds, how bad that actually is is not clear, and might well be worth just uh, developing. Sort of tempting white to uh, to pick up a pawn and then just complete your development in that way because if you get rid of those uh, queenside pawns of course the rook on a8 gets uh, nicely active as well which is your extra rook so yeah castles bishop d6 and now f4 and uh, it is one of those funny things somehow that uh, however you know you sort of do it whatever you try leela always seems to end up with some sort of um, attacking structure so black here decided to play the move castles. Knight df3 moving up and then bishop g6. I mean, you might have uh, just carried on, played a move like c5, for example, and just, uh, yeah, let white uh, show what um, what you're going to do. But maybe uh, black was a little worried about knight g5 coming in, something like this. But, well, I don't know. I mean, you know, c5, you're threatening c4. If you move the bishop away, then c takes d4, weaken the center. That seems like it would have been a pretty uh, decent way to play, I think. But okay, bishop g6 was um, was uh, was played. 
Um, and now, yeah, White took an interesting decision here. He could do it in various ways, but took with a knight on g6. And after hg, played knight g5. So this is quite a nice attacking structure, really. Um, first of all, we've got, you know, various threats against um, um, against these pawns. And secondly, of course, you know, there's no pawn barrier on the age file now. So actually moving the rook along and moving the queen along, that is a potential um, a potential attack. It's going to take a very long time, of course, but still, that is a potential attack. Now, I would have thought, to be honest, that the, the most sensible thing for black to do would just be to you know, to really um, uh, start playing c5, as long as you can calculate that these sort of things aren't, uh, aren't dangerous. But I guess that uh, Black was a little bit nervous about that and uh, decided to play the move knight d5, just to block the queen from uh, attacking uh, along this diagonal. Queen d1 played by um, Leela and then bishop e7. Black's playing quite cautiously here, able now to uh, get rid of the knight on g5 on demand. Um, and Leela played the move h4. So Black, yeah, maybe he played this move a little earlier than uh, than he needed to. Bishop takes g5, and Leela replied with h takes g5. So we've no longer got the pressure against um, all these guys, but we do have the idea, of course, of um, of uh, coming to the h file. And uh, yeah, this pawn is also stopping the knight from covering the f6 square. So you know, it's uh, there's swings and roundabouts here, but. <coughs> still black's doing pretty well and there's always the possibility of uh hitting the uh, emergency break with f5 if ever you need to so knight d7 played by black rook f3 from leela and black decided to play c5 i mean stockfish and torch were both uh, quite keen on f5 end of takes they wanted to take like this bishop g6 c5 but yeah i mean you need to be um um you know quite confident to uh, allow this sort of stuff i think the key point is that knight e7 can eject the knight if you uh, if you need to but yeah you know c5 from black was very very natural here e4 now from uh, leela knight b4 and bishop e2 and uh, here possibly i think black really missed a big chance um because i don't think it this this was really uh, kind of killing stuff just like that um here black could have played the move knight e5 which is really nice and if d takes c5, we go queen takes d1, bishop d1. And if f takes c5, we go queen takes d4. And uh, yeah, you know, of course, Leela will still stir up some trouble. But, you know, the king is safe and you've got loads of extra material. So, you know, I just think uh, this should be uh, this should be pretty safe, basically. You know, you should really be able to do this. Black played uh, the move knight b6, which also looks quite decent. I mean, um, after all, you're still threatening queen takes d4 here. But it gave the opportunity to Leela to um, keep the black pieces at bay with another sacrifice. So just d5 and e5. The center's closed, and now Leela's going to try and attack on the king's side. It's still minus 5.46. So, you know, hasn't cer certainly hasn't improved since uh, the opening. On the other hand, it hasn't really worsened somehow either. So, you know, obviously Leela's doing something quite uh, quite decent here. Also mentioned that after d5, uh, Torch was looking just to take like this and uh, again, you know, give up material in order to break the attacking front. And that also looks you know, very, very promising as well. <coughs> so after d4, Leela played rook h3 and rook e8 from uh, Black. So Black really very keen to, you know, uh, Get his king out of the way, and uh, you know it sort of fits the um, the quite careful way that um, that Black has played so far. So Leela played queen e1, and Black played the king to f8. So running for the hills. It's maybe not necessary yet. You could wait until queen h4 to play king f8, but why not uh, just be nice and early? After all, you're uh, a whole rook up, uh, a bit more looking at the pawns, and uh, you've got this whole wall basically in front of the. Um, you know, in, in front of the Black King. So, you know, it feels like a reasonably safe escape route. And this is where you really see the difference between uh, uh, Leela and uh, the other engines, um, because Leela now starts just giving up stuff uh, just in order to um, to start loosening up the Black King. You know, uh, Black wants to escape. Well, Leela's going to put some obstacles in the way. 
So after g takes f5, g6. And the idea here is that this bishop now can come to g5. So escaping to e7 is not going to be a safe way to uh, to play there. So black took on g6 and Leela went queen g3. So now in addition to the rook odds, we are, um, Leela has given up four pawns. But we've got a nice threat on uh, g6. And as I said, the king is not able to uh, to escape round there because we've got bishop g5 check. And um, yeah, here um, black played the incredible, incredibly natural move, um, king f7. And maybe you want to just uh, stop the video here um and um and uh yeah have a look to see what um what uh what white played because the finish was absolutely brilliant out of nowhere really queen takes g6 check king g6 bishop h5 check king h7 bishop f7 check queen h4 rook takes h4 mate simply yeah you know just uh had not uh, would not occur to me that this was even in the position somehow but uh, what it means in actual fact is that at this stage, you know, black actually needed to give back the queen and play the move rook e6. Rook h8 check, king f7 takes takes. And yeah, this should be very, very, very good for black because uh, obviously you're very solid now that you've um, <coughs> got rid of all the uh, attacking white pieces and you're threatening stuff like d3 to d2. So Lila would cause trouble, of course, but, um, but yeah, this should be... Uh, very very winning for uh, for black and yeah the king side now is fairly solid but missing that um, that idea king f7 yeah just allowed this brilliant mate bishop f7 so there we are what a brilliant game a big thanks to uh, one of the viewers of the channel for uh, for for pointing this one out said it was a brilliant game and I, I really really liked it I mean what I really liked about it was um that you know yeah I mean black was playing really well and uh, it was uh, I think it was 15 plus 10 actually the uh, time control so had plenty of time and you could see how carefully that enabled uh, black to play and you know keeping some control somehow maybe not always in the best way but uh, you know keeping Leela under wraps a little bit but even then you know uh you know just um when you you think okay just heading now to the last, uh, you know, the, the last phase, really. I'll just get my king out of the way and then start uh, coming down. That'll be it. You know, Leela just uh, somehow manages to stir up something. And, um, yeah, just, um, uh, you know, out of nowhere somehow, right? Just, uh, you just don't expect it at all. I mean, uh, there's nothing on the H-file, right? But just a queen sacrifice to push the king back on the H-file and deliver mate. You know, just absolutely incredible. And uh, yeah, I mean, that I, I guess that's the difference between the uh, the classical odds players who either beat you in uh, 20 moves or lost and Leela, who is able to beat you in 40 and 60 and 80 moves just by continually finding these uh, incredible tactics in any sort of positions. So, uh, yeah, I think obviously an inspiration to all of us to uh, to keep on fighting, even though when things are going bad, because the things that Leela finds, you know, are simply incredible. So there we are. Hope you enjoyed that game and stay tuned for many more odd games. Thanks for watching.